In the last video, we discussed the subgradient algorithm, and uh, we also discussed what distinguishes it from the gradient descent method. Um, uh, namely, we had two um, more or less demotivating examples. The first of one showed that the, the first of which showed that um, a subgradient will usually not give you descent direction, which means that the sequence of function values f of xn is not necessarily uh, falling. And the second um, observation was that we cannot use gamma n constant and instead we have to um, be a little bit more careful and our analysis now shows why uh, and how we overcome this problem. Okay, um, so as I said, the, the sequence of function value is not falling and therefore will not be of particular use for us right now. Um, and, and instead, what we what we are having a look at is um, the the distance of x n to a solution. So first of all, let x be arbitrary. Later, we will specify that x should be a minimizer of f. So then what, what, what do we have? So as I said, distance to um, this point x. So by the definition of xn plus 1, we know that this is equal to um, the norm of xn minus gamma n sn minus x squared and as usual we square our norm because we then can make use of the the inner product in our space and this means that we can write this as the norm of xn minus x squared minus 2 gamma n inner product of sn with xn minus x plus gamma n squared um, norm of Sn squared. So um, this is just uh, the, like the bit binomial uh, rule. So um, now we have used uh, the definition of Xn plus 1. What remains to be used is the fact that Sn is a, sub uh, a subgradient of F at Xn. So um, uh, since Sn is in df of Xn. What do we have? So we know x is arbitrary, so f of x is certainly greater or equal than this first order approximation at the point Xn, where we use Sn instead of where we usually would use the the gradient of f at xn, because the gradient does not uh, necessarily exist. So we have plus in a product of sn with x minus xn. Okay, so we see that this inner product here also appears in the previous inequal oh, previous equation actually. Uh, this is an inequality. Um, we just observe that we have the minus here and these things are interchanged. Um, so actually this expression here is with minus this inner product is the same as plus this inner product because we can just multiply this with minus 1 and then multiply it with minus 1 again. And this will not change anything. Okay. So now we know that um, in total this means that norm of xn plus 1 minus x squared. So it is equal to this and we know that this inner product multiplied with some positive constant is less or equal than minus f of xn plus f of x. Okay, so this whole expression will be less or equal than, uh, we'll just take this, and here we have 
minus 2 gamma m and here we have f of x m minus f of x. And then plus gamma n squared norm of s n squared. Okay, so this is the this is the main inequality which basically characterizes our algorithm. And we see that we have used everything uh, we have from our algorithm. So we have used the definition of xn plus 1. We have used the fact that sn is a subgradient. And we have even have used that gamma n is a positive step size um, because this uh, gives us the right sign here um, when we as when we replace this expression by this expression. All right, um, so um, now we can make use of this inequality. So the first observation is whenever um, we replace x by a minimizer of f, we, we see that this uh, difference of function values is certainly um, non-negative because the minimizer is smaller than anything, and any f of x n can be. And then we multiply this with some negative constant. So this whole term here will be lesser equal than zero, which is great because um, we can leave this out without changing our inequality. Um, the only spoiler here which we have is this thing. Otherwise, if we, if we had not had this expression, this would mean that um, the distance to a solution uh, is always falling. But with this spoiler here, um, we have to use a, a little bit more work. Okay, so basically we have to, to make two assumptions to continue. So if we assume two things, then we, are we, we will be able to continue. So as I said, the first assumption is that um, x bar is a minimizer of f. And in particular, this means that um, f of x n minus f of x will be greater or equal than 0. And the second, the second assumption we will, we will see in a minute. OK. So let's just insert x x bar instead of f uh, x bar instead of x. So then we get norm of x n plus one minus x bar squared uh, less or equal than norm of x n minus x bar squared minus two gamma n f of x n minus f of x bar plus gamma n norm of s n squared. OK, so uh, what we want to achieve is that apart from this um, term here, which is negative and on the right hand side, and therefore we can just leave it out without changing uh, much, uh, we want to have the same term on the left hand side on, and on the right hand side, but with n plus 1 on the left hand side and n on the right hand side, just as we have uh, here the, these two norms. But we want to incorporate um, this spoiler term um, where I have forgotten a square, um, gamma n squared norm of s n squared. And uh, the method to do that is to just add uh, this thing, but instead of n, also uh, also the term with n plus 1, with n plus 2, with n plus 3, and so on. Um, and then we get the sum of all the terms from n on the right-hand side, and the sum of all the terms from n plus 1 uh, upwards on the left-hand side. And this is exactly the same. And why do we do that? Um, the The reason is also that we want uh, the whole term to be um, non-negative so that we have a lower bound 
by by uh, so that zero is a lower bound of this whole term. This will also be important. So let's do this. Um, so we have. norm of x n plus 1 minus x bar squared. And as I said, let us just write this uh, term uh, here, but with um, n plus 1, n plus 2, and so on. So we take all k from n plus 1 to infinity and just add gamma k squared norm of s k squared. So this term, um, instead of n, we take k from n plus 1 to infinity. Um, so now that we have written this on the, on the left-hand side, we also have to add this on the right-hand side. But as you see, we also have this term here. So we take the sum not beginning from n plus 1, but beginning from n. So we have sum from, of k from n to infinity gamma k squared norm s k squared and then we have minus 2 gamma n f of x n minus f of x bar. Okay, so this is this inequality but just with some extra terms. And what we have here is um, this is uh, non-positive and this is the same expression but with n on the right hand side and with n plus 1 on the left hand side. So you see n appears twice and you both times replace this by n plus 1. Okay, so what do we see now? Now we have constructed um, something which is falling. Um, so we have constructed a falling sequence of numbers, these sums of, of, of norm terms. They, they are falling and they are bounded from below. So that's nice because then we know that this sequence of numbers will be convergent. So let's write this down. So this means that the sequence um, let's see let's, let's just take this expression plus this okay and we take n greater or equal than 0 because n yeah we should we should actually add that we have n greater or equal than 0 here um, uh, just to have all the variables defined um, so this is the sequence is non increasing. Okay, so now we have to make sure that um, this sequence is non-increasing and bounded from below and we have also to make we, we also have to make sure that this is actually a sequence of real numbers otherwise um, if this sum is in is plus infinity then we get <laughs> the sequence plus infinity plus infinity and so on which is yeah, non-increasing, but it's not particularly useful. And to make sure that this is a real sequence, we just have to make our assumption, which we left blank here, uh, namely the assumption that this sum, and here it doesn't matter if you start the summation from 0 or from n, um, the sum of, of yeah, let's, let's make it a bit prettier, Now I hope you see what I mean. Sum from k to from k equals zero to infinity of gamma k 
norm of s k squared needs to be uh, less than plus infinity. Okay, so this makes sure that this is a real number, this is a real number, uh, so the whole thing is a sequence of real numbers, and the, the whole thing is non-increasing, so it goes down and it is bounded from below. And then we know that, so since it's, since it is still the sequence, is bounded from below, because it's non-negative, um, so then we have that the limit of this sequence exists. So the limit of uh, x n minus x bar plus the sum of, from of k equals n to infinity gamma k squared s k norm squared. So this limit exists. Okay, so now let's let's have a closer look at this limit. So the limit consists of, of our distance to a solution. Great, uh, that's exactly what we want. Um, we want to we want to at least to have that this limit exists. That's that's a great observation. The other thing is here we have the remainder term of an infinite series. So the remainder term means that we just take the this series, the, the infinite sum from k to, from 0 to infinity of some non-negative terms, but instead of k, uh, instead of starting from 0, we start to n, and then let n go to infinity. And uh, from the like real calculus and, and, and analysis, we know that in this case, the limit of, of this from k to infinity is 0. So if we take the remainder terms from n and let n go to infinity, um, then uh, eventually there will be uh, no remainder terms by the definition of this infinite sum um, as the limit of, um, of the finite sums to n for n to infinity. So um, basically this is just the, um, the sum from k to 0 to infinity minus the sum from k to 0 to n minus 1, and by definition the sum, by definition of a convergent sum, the sum from k to, from 0 to n minus 1 um, goes to the, to the, to the, to the infinite sum as n goes to infinity. So this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. All right. Um, so now we know that uh, this goes to infinity, so we also have that the limit uh, of x n minus x bar exists and is the same uh, as this limit. Okay, and this is the first consequence of our um, of, of our inequality involving the solution. So we have that for any um, solution of any minimizer x bar of f, uh, the limit of the the distances x and minus x bar squared exists. Uh, one thing to note is, in particular, what what this means is that the sequence um, x n, this one. Um, is bounded. Okay, this is a very important observation. This means that x n cannot just do anything. It just it, it means that um, it stays within a like a finite uh, radius of any solution. Um, if it were not bounded, by the way, then uh, or yeah, if it, if it were not bounded, then it would take arbitrary large values and therefore this limit cannot exist. So this is a bounded sequence. And this is a very, very important first step, and we, we, from our inequality we only have used 
these norm terms and our, like, like I call it spoiler term, uh, we have not yet used that we have this, this function value here. We will use this later in, 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 a, in a later stage of, 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 the, of, of our convergence analysis. So for now, we have shown that um, Xn, the sequence is bounded. And uh, in the next video, we will have a look at the sequence Sn. And we will also show that it, it behaves well, so it is bounded. And then uh, we can have a look. Um, so here we have basically an upper bound on, on our seek on. I forgot the square here. That's bad. But I have all the other squares, at least that. So we have the we have the the like kind of an upper limit. So we have to make sure that our our step sizes are small enough so that this sum converges. Um, then uh, we have we also have to make sure that it is large enough so that our steps are large enough so that we actually converge to a solution and not, not get stuck anywhere at at any other place. So this will be the plan for our next uh, video. Um, uh, which continues the analysis of the subgradient method.